I'm going to share with you. And I want to share with you God's beauty of motherhood. Now, I want to warn you that from my title, I am now um, being radical. It is now radical in America to say things, what I'm, what I'm about to say, because America don't want you to say it. Uh, they, they, they pass laws. You're not even supposed to say the word mother anymore. To say the word mother is bad. They now say birthing persons. I'm, I'm, for those who watch me on YouTube in the future and those who are with me now, I may, I may be dead and gone when you watch this. Refuse to ever call anybody a birthing person. That's just sick. You know, birthing person, you a woman, you a mother. And you know, the problem is they done mess y'all women up. Y'all scared to even say me. Y'all like, I don't want to say nothing. I don't want to cause no heat. And it's interesting that the most, ad, the most vociferous advocate against this kind of stuff is like the woman who wrote Harry Potter, who was an extreme feminist, who's like, enough is enough. We have mothers, and mothers are beautiful. You are a mother. You're not a birthing person. You're a mother. You're not a lactating person. You are a mama. So this is already radical enough to get me canceled in some circles, which I would love to be canceled there. God's beauty of motherhood. And I'm about to say something else that's radical. Only women, born women, can be mothers. If you ain't born a woman, you can't be a mother. Never could, never will be. Only born women can be mothers. I'm sorry, why would I say only born women? Because if you're not born a woman, you're not a woman. If you're not born a woman, you're not a woman. And only women can have babies. And only women can be mothers. I thought, I thought every woman. You talking about, you talking about, man, you talking about woman hating? They've been woman hating in, in wide open spaces and women scared to push back. I'm helping y'all women now. Only women can have babies. You know, we live in a crazy time where to say that is like, for real? I'm a man. I'm all man. Never could. Never will be able. I don't care what the doctor does to me. I'll never be able to have no baby. I'm talking about you take me to, to, to Johns Hopkins. I ain't coming out baby having. I'm going to come out mutilated. But I'm not going to come out baby having. There's a plot against God's beauty for motherhood. Uh, God's mother, there's a plot against it. You, you know, we, we first... Because of the world system, we first lost uh, fathers. Four in ten in America, children are born in a household without a father present in the household. It's six in ten in the black community, children born in a house. Uh, her 6.5, 10. I got the stats, just looked them up this week. Born without a father in the house. But now they're being born without father or mother because Satan is seeking to destroy God's institution of parenthood. As a matter of fact, motherhood reflects the love of God. It's the mother who first feels the life. It's the mother that, that brings forth life. It's the mother that has every provision for a child. When a child is born, every provision. You don't have to go to the store for a baby. All provision comes through the mother's mammary glands for that child. You don't need no medicine. You don't need no nothing. All you need is breast milk. First is, what is it called? Um, colostrum. I knew it started with a C. Colostrum. That colostrum provides all the antibiotics and everything a child needs. And then after the colostrum, oh, I just remembered something. I'm coming to it now. After the colostrum, uh, then the milk that provides every nutritional need they have. Just like God is all we need, mama is all the baby needs. I forgot, and I can't forget. Brittany had her baby. Uh-oh. Yeah, Brittany had her baby. She had a baby girl. And uh, I, I got the picture. There she go. Her name is Poppy. Poppy, she was just born on Friday. Ain't that exciting? Brittany, we love you. We're so glad Brittany had this baby. She just had it on Friday. She's beautiful. I think she was like eight pounds, five ounces. I got it written down, but I'm going by memory. If I'm wrong, the poppy will sue me. But isn't she beautiful? A new addition to the church. We thank God for that. Can't wait for her arrival. So 
classic mother, Sister Brittany, had her baby. Before I, get, before I go too far, if you have any questions about what I'm going to preach on, you can text me, and I'll do my best to answer that question before I sit down. Uh, text me at 662-505-4544. Do not call me on that number during the week because I'm not answering that phone. That is strictly the answer text line. So you can text me on that line, and they will send me your questions. I will answer it um, before I sit down. So I want to talk about a few things. I want to talk about motherhood. first thing I want to share is God honors motherhood. God honors mothers. God honors motherhood. God honors you. There's a scripture that blesses me every time I think about it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Isaiah 49, 15. It, it, there's two clauses in here that covers everything. Can a woman forget her nursing child? And not, have permission, and not have compassion on the son of her womb. Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. First of all, it talks about the beauty, the power of mothers who don't forget their children, who sacrifice for their children. Another way that motherhood reflects God is that a mother sacrifices. Jesus sacrifices life, and a real mama sacrifices. Real mama sacrifices her life for her children. Even the process of having a child is sacrificial. You sacrifice yourself for them and have compassion on that child. And, and, and by the way, I just learned a little while ago, the term mama was named before you even named it. My, my, my. Come from the child. Uh, first thing a child, uh, my, my children said dad, dad, I think. But anyway. But really, most children, they say mama because when they want milk, they, they, they want the mother's breast. They want to suck from their mother. The drink, ma, 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 ma. Then you get the Latin mater. And so mama talks of the provision that the mama gives. In, 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 in Latin, it's mater. In, uh, in Zulu, it's umama. In Swahili, it's mama. Now, not in every language, it's mama. In, uh, in Hebrew, it's ima. Ma, ma, ma. The act of feeding, the act of providing for that child has given the name to mother. So whenever you say mama, mama, it's because she has provided for her children. And we thank God for that. And say, can a mother forget her nursing child and not have compassion? Mothers have compassion on their children, the son of their room. However, not every mother does, and God acknowledges this in the next sentence. Surely they may forget. Because the world has told us that to be a mother is bad. To be a businesswoman is great. To be an astronaut is great. But if you seek to just, to just be a mother, what kind of woman are you? But it's the mothers who rule the world. Surely they may forget, but even if your mother forgets you, even if your mother is bad, God says, I will not forget you. God says, I will not forget you. The Bible honors mothers who have born and nurtured uh, children, even in difficult circumstances. I don't have time to go through, but Hagar, Sarah, Mary, God honors mothers that have sacrificed for their children and through difficult times. How many of you know, uh, first of all, you know, they've tried to make it bad now where they've made having a puppy equivalent with having a child. That's sick. I, I, I'm going to be a mother. I'm going to buy a puppy. That's sick. Your puppy with his worms is not equivalent to my baby. Because once it ain't cute no more, you just might go let it loose in the forest. But a child is a gift from God, made in God's image and made in your image. Ain't no puppy look like you. No, no puppy act like you. You don't pass legacy to no puppy. What puppy going to pass legacy to? You got a stinking puppy. What, you going to teach that puppy to follow in your footsteps? So that puppy is not your child. That goldfish is not your child. Just stay with me, y'all, and it passed to being harsh. Reminds me of one great mama. I prayed about examples of mamas, and I thought about many great examples in here. And, and, and instead of using folks in the room, because then somebody said, he skipped me. Because <laughs> there's hundreds of mamas in this church, so I don't need no heat. But I think some of y'all look just like this. You look just like Sojourner Truth. 
I got a lot of Sojourner Truths in my church. You look beautiful just like this mama. I'm not looking at her hair. I'm not looking at her nails. I'm not looking what she's smelling like from Bath Body Works. But Sojourner Truth, who was born in 1797, you talking about a sacrificial mama where her children were taken. She was born a slave. Her children were taken from her as a slave. As she had them, they took them and sold them after she weaned them. She escaped herself to freedom and became one of the most prominent speakers in America for women's rights and for the abolition of slavery. This mother suffered but became an advocate for mothers and children. Her suffering did not define her as a mother, even though many of her children were snatched from her, never to be seen again, treated like puppies. And now we got people acting like slave masters with puppies, treated like puppies, and you know her her short speech, everybody who's a self-respecting uh, uh, person has read her speech because it's real short. And in her speech, I put a little quote from her speech from 1851, the Ain't I a Woman speech. She said, I have borne 13 children and seen most all sold off to slavery. And when I cried out with my mother's grief, none, of, none but Jesus heard me. Ain't and ain't I. A woman. She shows that even in her grief and even in the things that she did not make choices, she did not choose to be in this bad situation and what she suffered, she did not allow it to, de de to define her and to destroy her. She flipped it and became a blessing to thousands of other mothers. That takes us that if you got a mama, you need to be a blessing to your mama. That's my second point. Y'all stay with me now. Be a blessing to your mother. Ephesians 6, 2 says, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise. So that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Honor your father and mother. Honor your mother don't mean do everything she say. You 30 years old don't mean I got to ask mama to tell me what to do. She raised you to be a man. She raised you to be a woman. That don't mean do everything she say, but you honor her. That don't mean you control her, but you honor her. I got to honor my mom. My mama told me this. She told me to go into this in college. No, that's not honoring. To honor your mother is to, no matter what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand for my mother. I'm going to uh, appreciate the woman that God allowed me to come through her womb to be a blessing. I'm going to be a blessing to her. Now, I learned a long time ago, sons, you always put a piece of money in your mama's hand. Man, I thought some mamas would say amen to that. What happened to my church today? You a son? You a son? You don't always ask your mom for a cash app. You 16. You should be looking to put some money in her hand. Don't know sons always going to your mama for some money. You about 16. You should start putting, press here you go, mama. This is for something. I got sons right now. My wife got a husband. She got a whole husband. Who take care of everything in the house. But I got sons in this room right now. Every time they come home, they bring something set on the table. Here, I just thought, I know you like this. They got some groceries. They don't do it for me. They don't even say nothing to me. They don't say, Dad, I bought you. They say, Mama, I got you. They don't say nothing to me. And they shouldn't because I'm a man. I take care of myself. But you take care of your mama. You honor your mama. Love on your mama. Spoil her sometime. Take her out to eat sometime. How are you 32 still calling your mama for money? You're supposed to be giving her money by now. They, oh, mama, I need some money. For what? For some Jordans? That was over in the 10th grade. Buy your own Jordans. The way that, way that brother just looked at me, I feel like preaching now. I ain't going to say who it was. <laughs> Honor your father and mother that it may be well. Uh, children are commanded to honor and respect their mothers, not just when it's easy. For many of us, our parents are getting older, which means you may have to take care of your mother. You may have to care for her just like she cared for you. I told you. It is, it is God's design that our parents go before us. That's the preferable way. So you were born to help and strengthen. House ain't always going to be the same. You may have to go fix something there. Make sure everything is in order. Help strengthen. Don't expect mama. A at some point, mama shouldn't be cooking for the grown kids. The grown kids should be cooking for mama. 
how you going to, how today Mother's Day and you asking mama what she cooking? Today Mother's Day, you want your mom to cook for you, be cooking for you all your life. Your whole stinking life she's been cooking for you, telling my mama, you know I love that, them greens you make. You should be in the kitchen learning how she make them, you should be able to make them like she make them for her. When I go to my mama house, I cook for her. I throw something, put something in my mama hand. My daddy be looking like I be looking. I'm like, daddy, you daddy, you good. You good. You a dude. But I'm going to take care of mama. If my mama want a red dress, I'm going to buy a nice red dress. Because ain't no mama like the one I got. Oh, that's ain't no woman like the one I got. I'll always love my mama. There we go. I got the right song now. She's my favorite girl. Uh-uh, uh-uh. What's wrong with you? Where y'all been this week? I've been on outreach. I'm fresh. It says, honor your mother and father that your days may be long. Have you ever wondered why there's a promise that your days will be long if you honor your parents? I'm going to explain it to you with this chair. There was a man whose father had gotten older. And they ended up taking his father into their house. But his father, he hadn't forgiven his father some things from the past. And he didn't like his father. And he didn't even like how his father sat at the table and slurped over his food. <laughs> so one day he got a chair and set it on the side and told him, Daddy, you sit there. And we sit at the table because you eat too loud and I'm tired of you. And he'll talk to his daddy rough. Isn't it bad when children get a little older and they start talking rough to their parents? Dog and their parents. Let me tell you something. Elder abuse is real. And if you abuse an elder up in here and I find out about it, I'm coming to abuse you the same way you abused them. Okay, no, I'm not. But I'm going to expose you. And we're going to fight you and we're going to confront you because that's wrong. And if you don't have to take it, hello, somebody. Nah, 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 nah. How you? Hold up now. And so he set a chair to the side and little thing, you eat over there. And one day, this man's son was playing, and he was playing house and playing some things, and he said, what's that over there? And this little son, about six years old, he said, that's the chair you're going to sit in when you get old. Because how he saw him treat his father is how he's going to treat you. See, you go ahead and... You go ahead and treat your mama bad in front of your kids, dog them and talk about them behind their back and do whatever. Your children are listening. And you're teaching them how to treat you in about 20 years. And let me tell you something. I know you're young now, but time is coming. Time flies. And the shoe gets on a, look, I never thought I'd have a day when my house was empty. I promise you. But I was so glad when everybody was in my house. Oh, look at everybody. I hear noise. Out. Ah. I was feeding them. Like, Y'all ain't eating no more. They grown now. They don't eat like they used to. Eat another rib. Take another rib. There's a time when they're going to grow up. And let me tell you something, my children grow fast. Don't try to make them grow too fast. Don't try to get rid of them, but honor those above you. That don't mean you always agree with them. That don't mean that they were always perfect, they were always right. That's not what we're saying. But you need to honor them because you pass a legacy that goes down. Hallelujah. You know, mothers are powerful. My next point, mothers are powerful. Mothers, the power of a mama. Do you know if you're a mother, you're powerful? There's a reward of motherhood. The reward of motherhood is not just in joy of seeing children grow and thrive and make money, but also in the eternal impact that you make. Mothers have on their children's lives and lives of generations to come. That as a mother, you have influence to impact your children's lives and impact the future in your children. Why do, why, why do you think it's the first language you speak, why do you think it's called your mother tongue? You learned it from your mother. Why do you think that your mother's influence upon a child's life? You impact the future. This is why Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 through 9 says, you shall teach them, talking about your children, you shall teach them diligently to your children the word of the Lord, the laws of the Lord. You shall teach them diligently to, to your children. Best thing you can do for your children is not you too. Best thing is not what you buy. Best thing is because you took your child and we go to the best of restaurants. I've learned in our own school, in our school, our principal asked the children, oh, we're going to reward y'all. What do y'all want to eat? In my head, they was going to say pizza. 
kids are talking about crab legs and lobster. Dude, you in the third grade. How do you even know those words? <laughs> it's not because you can give them steaks and porterhouse and T-bone. But you, you want to bless your children and give your children something you never had. You got to give them God. Because they can, they, can, they can graduate on the honor roll. They can graduate magna summa cum laude. They can go to best school or whatever. But when life hits, when life hits, their GPA ain't about to fix it. They can have all their GPA because they cute and was on the cheer team. He was handsome and he was all state, played football. When life hits, you don't give them God, you've abused them. That's why we got so many young folks suicidal now, anxiety, confused and messed up because they had everything and nothing at the same time. Because I didn't want to take them to church. And my mama dragged me to church all the time, so we just going to hang out. Yup, now, look, what it, now look, how, look how that paid off. They hate you and your God. Sacrifice. You shall teach them. And, and, and if your house is incongruent with your church, you're going to do them worse. Because then they think we all like you. You got all kind of you hanging and you clubbing more than they ever could. You think they don't see? They see you, girl. You want me time every day. But you ain't got time for them. They ain't going to have time for themselves. They're going to feel the abandonment inside the house. I just need time. I've been at work. I, 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 I don't, don't talk to me. What? I can't talk to you? You shall teach them diligently to your children. Teach the laws of God. Talk of them. When you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lay down, when you rise up, you're telling them things of God. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Which means even we took this literally in my house. My wife and I and hang scriptures around the house so the children will see the scripture. Get Christian storybooks to read to them. Why would you trust Disney? Disney is grooming children to be pimped. Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon just showed us that. Cartoon Network, they're grooming children to be pimped. Why would you trust them? And if you're going to trust them, why would you trust YouTube to raise your child? Here, take your TV. Your child can do this, swipe and do whatever, and can't even say an A, B, stick and C. And even if it's good, if even if it's Gracie's corner, they're closer to Gracie and her family than they are to your family. Gracie's daddy became their daddy. We gonna move, we gonna do We gonna move, we move, 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 move. It's cool, ain't nothing wrong with Gracie, but I don't want my children closer to Gracie and her family than they are to me. I don't want somebody on YouTube or on the TV to have more influence over my child than I do. Now, this is to all parents because fathers protect the environment and stand with mothers. I thought I would get a, a men's amen. I'm going to say that again because that was the weakest man's amen we ever had. I think somebody was like half asleep, didn't know what I said. Fathers stand with mothers to raise their child and protect the environment so they have a place to thrive and flourish. Okay, I got some men up in here. Because can't no woman be, uh, 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 it's, it's, it, it, God can compensate, but God's plan is that whether you with the mama or not, you picked her. If she ratchet, she was ratchet when you met her. She was ratchet when you met her. So, don't complain to me now. You picked her. If he's stankin' trifling, he was stankin' trifling when you met him. You picked him. When you laid down with him, you did the things that bring babies. You can't erase him. So, baby mama, she got, you got to pay whatever. It child support is not raising a child. Time and attention raises a child. Teaching your child the words of God. Showing a boy how to be a man, man. Not no softy soft. And that means, mama, you got to let that man treat that boy like a man. 
Because I'm going to handle them much different than you handle them. Don't do that to my baby. Who's getting my baby? Sit down, woman. Let me raise my boy. I thought some men would say amen. Sometimes I got to roar at the boy. Sit down, boy. You being too hard. Life going to be hard on him. You hit his bottom too hard. The police going to hit him much harder. So we, we either going to be standing there with Crump the lawyer or I'm going to put some on his behind that he won't forget. I'm going to wake him up at, a, at, at 5 in the morning and say, you didn't do the dishes, boy. Get up and do them dishes. Don't do that. Let him sleep. Get up. At 5 in the morning, daddy, daddy, do them dishes. You were supposed to do them. Let him wait till later. He ain't wait till nothing. I thought some men was in it. Ask my boys. That's why they go to work. That's why they no responsibility. Ain't no pampering, baby. You gotta let that. You 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 got a husband. Let that husband be a husband. And don't don't pit the husband. Uh, I'm, uh, listen, this is between me and you. I won't tell daddy when he get home. Just, uh, no. You have to whoop him. Now tell me when I get home, and I decide if he needed more. Because I don't think mama's whooping is good enough. He needs some man love. You whooped him. He did what? He did what? Come on here, boy. Uh, it's okay. I took care. No, I'm going to make sure he know. Not to mess with my wife like that again. Why are we sitting here? What are we going we gonna to pastor like Dr. Spock? Dr. Spock wrote a book and then said he was wrong. What, I'm going to pastor like what? Homer Simpson? I'm going to pastor God's way. Let me get focused. Let me get focused. Speaking of sacrificial mothers, Susanna Wesley. You all ever heard of Susanna Wesley? You ever heard of her? Most people never heard of her. That's why I picked her. Susanna Wesley is a mother of 19. Her son, she had two, two of her famous sons are Charles, but the more famous is John Wesley. Have you heard of John Wesley? Oh, more people heard of John Wesley, never heard of his mama. John Wesley is, is responsible for the pushing of the Methodist movement, the Methodist church. Now, Lord have mercy. <laughs> that thing done flipped on him. <laughs> but we're going to stick with the original Methodist. In spite of her husband's meager income, her husband was a preacher. He was an Anglican priest. Uh, she prioritized what she prioritized in her life. She prioritized children, education, and spiritual growth. Her children's education and spiritual growth was her priority. She didn't want to be big at, down at the office, but nothing at home. And when her home was damaged in the storm, leaving only one room livable, she and her husband moved into the kitchen, put the children in their bedroom so they can have a place to study. She, she did homeschooling. She taught them. She raised them, and they can have a brand warm place to sleep. And her legacy, her legacy is that not only did she raise her 19 children, she raised a whole holiness denomination. That's the original holiness, folks, y'all. You talk about holiness, it's the Methodist, not, not the UMC today. But she raised millions of people were impacted by her sacrifice through her, through her children who later impacted the world. It's a beautiful thing. It's a sacrifice, but it's worth it. You only have so much time. Because right now, my, my son there with his wife, he picked a good one. My other son with his wife, well, he got a good one. My man. We together. But I can't make choices for them. I can't tell them what to do now. You raised them. Now I can't, I, I, can't, I can't rewind the tape at 23 and try to raise them all over again. Oh, let me, let me try to fix this. Oh, I was having too much fun. I was thinking I had to live my life. It's too late now. Now you can straighten a whole crooked tree up. With one hand, with one hand, I can straighten up a crooked tree today. Me, I'm strong enough to do that. As long as it's a sapling. <laughs> a brand new tree. I can bend it, turn it up, straighten it up. But once that tree grow, ain't nothing I can do. You try to bend it then, it's broken. That's why so many people here now, some of y'all, 30, 40, 50, 60, sport stinking brats. 
and I know how you was raised. You spoiled brat. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Can't nobody look at you. Can't nobody nothing. You can't take no adversity. As soon as it get hot, you go, it's hot. I got to go. Like, what in the world? What you been through in life? Only God can fix that. Been to God. If you wasn't raised right, God will fix you. God will fix you. I know some of us have changed. Anybody change from where you used to be? You can change. But, but don't nobody, I'm telling you, children, they're upstairs. You're not the center of the, don't tell your child they're the center of the universe because they're not. Here's what my, my wife, who just testified about the other day, she was orphaned at 12. Her whole family, biological family, said they didn't want to take her home. A woman at 71 took her and her sister in. She was 71 years old. Anna Mae Walls in Crowder, Mississippi. But Anna Mae, because they were bitter, they had been through a lot. Her mother had been on drugs, all kinds of things. Anna Mae Walls, I never met her. I met my wife after, she, after her mother passed away. She w- but my wife says it to our children. I got to raise you so I won't be the only one who loves you. I need you to be the type of person that more than just a mama can love you. Because I'm going to tell you what, everybody don't think your child cute. And they're going to show them. They're going to fire them on their jobs. <laughs> they, gonna, they ain't going to loan them no money. They ain't going to be bothered with them. They're going to be isolated and alone because they always just got what they wanted. You got you to gotta sacrifice. As a parent, your sacrifice sometimes is not to be the good guy. I'll be the bad guy, you'll hate me now, and you'll respect me later. Or, here's the flip side, how many of, this, how many of you this happened? I'm, I'm somewhere that I didn't plan to be. How many of you this happened? You thought your parents were the coolest, best parents ever, then you got older and said, why did they let me do that? Why didn't they tell me? Is there anybody know what I'm talking about? You, you couldn't respect them. Once you got grown and got some knowledge, you couldn't even respect them. You love what they let you. You can eat candy and stay up all night. Don't go to school if you don't want to, whatever, whatever, whatever. They said, why didn't they push me harder? Why didn't they bring the greatness out of me? So too many parents now think, I got to be the good guy. I want my kid to like me. They going to like you. Listen, every one of my children, when I just talked about waking a boy up at 4 or 5 in the morning, some of them say that's their testimony. But guess what? After a while, they, when they knew we were consistent, they did what they were supposed to do. And even after punishing them or after whatever else, they still love you. They ain't going, I don't like you with me. They ain't like you. First of all, you don't give a child a spanking without talking to them and making them sure they understand why. <laughs> I'm going to make ask my kids, it, it, sometimes take a minute. Why am I whooping you? Because you mad. I ain't mad. Sometimes you got to calm down, not be mad. I ain't mad. I'm good. But I still got to, uh, my children tell me, when they got a, when they got a whooping in a layaway, <laughs> like, I'm going to whoop you, but not now because I'm too mad. So it's in the layaway. And now they're about to go to bed. They're looking like, are you going to take care of this? No, nah, we'll wait till tomorrow. we wait till tomorrow. I'll, I'll handle this tomorrow. <laughs> you got a whooping in the layaway. So especially when you put in the layaway, because you don't want to hit them without the anger. So you might have to put it on the layaway. Then you come back tomorrow. You remember what happened yesterday? You know why I got it? No, that ain't why. This is why. I need you to understand. Now let me know again why. Why? Now you got it. Now go and find that. My, go and find my whooping belt. I had a belt I didn't wear, but it was a whooping belt. I learned that from my daddy. So it hang on the door. Yeah, to get the whooping belt. <laughs> I don't need one of them cheap belts. I need one with a little weight on it, real leather. Anyway. <laughs> Why are we talking about whoopings? I don't know. Because you can't always be the good guy. Let me, get, let me give you something else. If I cook food, you're going to eat it. I don't care what you like. This is what we're eating. And if you don't want to eat that, then you're not going to eat, but you're going to eat what we're eating. Then you're not going to eat nothing until you eat that. And guess what? You're going to figure out how to eat that. And you're going to thank me one day. Now, my son, I'm going to call you out on this one. My son who is a physical trainer and a nutritionist, told me I gave them too many servings of oatmeal in the morning. (laughs) 
I'll give him a big old pop. He, he, he was in class one day, and he texted me. He said, you know, you used to give us, you know how many servings of oatmeal you gave us when we was in school? I said, but you were full all day, wasn't you? <laughs> you didn't get hungry, did you? <laughs> You, you overfed us. Guilty as charged. I overfed you. Let's hurry up. The fruitfulness of women beyond biological motherhood. There are some people in here who do not biologically have a child. But you can be fruitful. And God can bless you to be a mother. Psalms 113 verse 9. He grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. Wait, what? He grants the barren, that's infertility, the infertile woman, a home like a joyful mother of children. There are many things. There are some ways women may not be able, they might not be able to bear biological children, but they can still experience fruitfulness and motherhood in, 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 in other ways. You can, spiritual motherhood, you can nurture and disciple uh, others in the faith. You can mentor and nurture younger women and girls. You can care for uh, and support children in, their, uh, ex- in your extended family. That's my sister. My sister is it. all my children and my brother's children, she they mama. She don't have any biological children, but she they mama. She, she look and talk to them and encourage them, but she, not, she don't have her own children. But she got children. They're her children. Engage in creative and artistic pursuits that bring, in, bring life and beauty to others. You can nurture the society. And you can adopt. There are people in here that don't have biological children, but they've adopted and raised children. You're they mama. And I don't know this whole real mama. That's my real mama. That ain't my blah, 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 blah. I'm raising you. I'm as real as it gets. Don't tell me I ain't your real daddy. I'm raising you. Did, did, did you just eat my cornbread? I have two children that are not biologically mine. Two children that are not biologically mine. I, only reason why you heard it because I just said it now. I don't get it. Yeah, thank God. Now these ain't mine, but these mine. Man, you out your stinking mind, you knucklehead. What you mean? And I ain't not good because I take care of them. What, what, what else you going to do? Barabbas? You just say random Bible words just to. <laughs> Adopt them. They're yours. They mine. This is my son. This is my daughter. I don't even believe in no steps. What's a step? You walk up steps. You walk on steps. You know, step children. They my children. I'm gonna treat you just like the other ones. Ain't no difference. You don't even know who biological, who not, do you? Nope. You don't know. You, 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 let me tell you something, sisters. Now, first of all, oh, God, I'm somewhere. You got to be real careful about marrying you got children. You got to be real careful about having a boo you got children because cause predators come in that way. So don't be in no rush. That's all I'm going to say on that because I'm going to dig deep in that, but I got something else I want to say. I want to end this with tips for mamas and dads. Dealing with the prodigal child. Some of us have prodigal children. If you're not, if you're not familiar with the Bible, the Bible tells the story of the pro- Most of us know the prodigal son, but just in case you're not, uh, the prodigal son was a son who lived in a home and decided he didn't want to follow the rules. He wanted to go off and do things his own way. Interesting thing about that parable is that the father and mother never went out to find him. They waited till he came to his own mind and came back and they welcomed him with open arms. One thing is for sure, you can mess your child up if they become a prodigal by enabling them. I don't get money for liquor. I don't get money for, for weed. I don't get money for get high. I don't get money for you to run around chasing women or doing whatever else. I don't get money for that. Now, if you come in the house, you want a plate, but after a while, enough is enough. I'm a, you're going to get some grace, but after a while, it's like, no, nah, you cut off and you got to... With pain, with pain, watch that and say, I have to do it because if I don't, God can't deal with them. Now, sometimes the assumption of people who ain't never really raised no children, I used to assume this because I went to college and got stupid. Uh, 
I assumed if your child was wayward, you did something wrong. I assumed if your child wasn't doing right, it was a reflection on you. Now, that's probably true at about from ages 1 to 12, 13, 14, 15. I mean, your child is crazy. Yeah, that's, if they're up in children's church beating on kids, eating blue, run down the hall, yeah, I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> I'm, I need to deal with you. But once it's, <laughs> look. I'm fresh out of children's church. Remember, two weeks ago, Point Dexter preached, I was in children's church, so I know. Put that blue down. And that was in high school. But anyway. <laughs> but as an adult, especially as an adult, and even in teens, our children have, God gave them free will and free choice. And I've noticed something, because I have children. They, you can have two children raised in the same house, raised the same way, but they make different choices. And one child will blame it on the parents because, I, I, listen, I learned this because I'm now a grandfather and I'm a father. If you come blaming me for what you didn't do in your life and what you can't do in your life and you 30, here's what I say. Get over it. Figure it out. I ain't doing nothing. You didn't leave me. You didn't. I didn't do what when you graduated from high school? I didn't pay for what? Get over it. You old enough to make it, fix it yourself then. Because there's, th there's two imperfects. Bishop Harris, there's two imperfects. <laughs> two imperfect things. There's the imperfect parent and there's the imperfect child. Nobody's parent is perfect and nobody's child is perfect. And it's easy to sit back and say, my mama didn't do this, and that's why I didn't, I didn't get no degree, because they didn't this, that, nothing. Well, you old enough now to go ahead and get your own degree. So you're going to sit here and be mad at your mama every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, every Mother's Day. I would have been something, but y'all didn't tell me. And you 38. You 50 talking about you went to the wrong high school on the other side of the tracks. By now, you could have fixed that. Thank you. Because the society want to tell us that it's always somebody else's fault. Society want to tell us that you are a perpetual victim. If I was rich like, if I was rich like white people, all white people ain't rich. All white people ain't successful. I was a dumb Negro. I came out of college talking all these big words when I got around white folks, and they didn't even understand what I was saying. <laughs> I just thought they was white. They understood. They're like, I don't understand a word you just said. Well, I thought you white. I thought you knew. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Had to dumb it way down. <laughs> I want to give a couple quick tips. Can I do this real quick? For mamas and daddies dealing with prodigal children. Your children are not doing what you expect. They, they've gone away. They have not acting like they were raised. Or maybe they act like they were raised, but they're not following right. First thing you need to do, I got it here in order, is pray for your children. In Job 1, it says in Job 1 that Job said that, I, I, I'm not going to read these scriptures. You can get them later. You get the notes. Job said, uh, maybe my children have sinned. Maybe my children have done something. And he was praying for them. Interestingly enough, Job was praying for his children right before they died. Pray for your children. You can't tell everybody, go up and down, run them down, pray for them. And then second, show unconditional love to your children. Now, what does that mean? I want to make sure you get that. Unconditional love don't mean giving money all the time. Unconditional love don't mean giving you my car for you to go ride around and be the dope dealer in my car. No, that ain't what. Uh, unconditional love means, Junior, little Keisha, I love you. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, I will always love you. No matter who you are, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Especially, whew, mm -mm, I'm going to just stay there. That will go down a rabbit hole. And then what you got to do with your children, because, oh, by the way, Proverbs 10.1, Proverbs 10.1 says that a, a child, that's not in the notes, but you can write that down. A, a, a good child, a good son Brings honor to the father, but brings heaviness to the mother. Brings heaviness. Some of you right now are heavy because your child didn't even think to say happy Mother's Day. 
The child didn't even check on you. Couldn't even come to church with you one out of 52 Sundays. You begged them to come. They wouldn't even come. They too busy. They don't believe in this, that, 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 that. And you're like, after all the sacrifice, I, 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 uh, you don't think it's nothing driving a child around to Little League and to this and that and this, your whole day driving around. And now you don't want to make a short drive to come see me? That hurts. That hurt. They look at me talking about you ain't got nothing. I gave you all I got. And now you're going to tell me I didn't give you enough? I went with holes in my socks and drawers so you can have, and now you're going to tell me you didn't have what the other kids had? That hurts. When your child turns their back and flip on you and say, you, you crazy, I don't want nothing to do with you, I'm cutting you off, you ain't no good, and you've done your best, that's heavy. But I need to tell you something. Don't carry it. Don't let your children kill you. Because they will if you let them. A, way, a prodigal will kill you if you let them. That heaviness will get into your blood pressure, get into your heart, get into your kidneys, get into your, your sugar levels, your everything. You start, they, you think you sick and you ain't sick. You carrying that child and you can't carry grown folks. Now, let me tell you something. <laughs> you, you in high school, I'm going to keep on fighting. But you grown. I can't carry you. I'm going to sleep at night. How you up all night? He all having a good time. You are worried about where he at. I worried about who she with. You done told them, I'm going to bed. I got a life to live. I hope, Lord, help them. Lord, protect them. Good night. Now, for some of you young parents, that sounds real harsh. Oh, my God, did he say that? I don't mean let the four-year-old go out. <laughs> I'm talking about the 24-year-old. Four-year-old, we keep parameters. But then you also got to forgive and release them. You got to forgive your children. After all I did for my daughter, I'm just talking random. I'm not talking about my own kids. I'm just talking to us. All I did my daughter, she want to be a thought. She want to be the freak of the week. My son wasn't even raised, your child wasn't even raised about around criminality, and now he the biggest thug on the block. Dude, you got a 24 on your ACTs. Now you using all you got to be a dope pusher? Walking around, <laughs> you done dumped yourself down to fit in with, with what? And you can say, all my investment, all I did is to waste. Forgive them. Because you know what's going to happen? You're going to end up exploding and saying or doing something that pushes them further away out of your frustration. And then they're going to use that to say, see, see, I told you. But when you flip the script and be like, ah, I'm good. What do you think? What do you think, daddy? What do you think, mama? It's your life. Yup, you judging me. I ain't judging nothing. Do what you want. You can choose what you want to do, but you can't choose the, the consequences. Amen. So that's on you. But as for me in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So don't nobody in my house smoke, drink, shack, nothing. Innocent. Once you cross my yard line, you follow my rules. Then if you want to do what you want to do, you go do it somewhere else. And you know what's right. You know what's wrong. You know better than me. One thing I found out, we've been out in all those places I mentioned, all those places I mentioned, I met folks that know Bible more than some of y'all. I, I met folks that know Scripture more than the people I had preaching to them. I had people preaching to them, looking at notes. I had a man over here on crack quoting 15 Scriptures to me. I mean, he rolling. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, dude, what's up? He's like, I just like to get high. Somebody trained you. Somebody's grieving. Forgive them. Let them go. Matthew 6, 5 says, For if you do not forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also, uh, if you forgive them, he'll forgive you. If you do not forgive them, he will not forgive you. So pray for your children, your prodigals especially. Show unconditional love, forgive and release them, and don't ever give up hope. 
Psalms 30, 4 through 5 says, Sing praise unto the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for uh, life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I want to thank my children publicly. They bring me joy by how they love on their mother. I want to thank them. And there were, there were some days that I didn't see what I see now. There were some days that I was like, what's going on? This one ain't doing this. This one not following the plan. This one not this. But they made a choice to correct course and move forward and bring joy to their father and mother. I honor you all for that. I honor my children publicly for that. Never give up hope. Never write them off. I don't care the worst one. I was the worst one for my parents. I hated God. I hated men. I hated everybody. I pushed my uh, hate God stuff to my father, argue to no end. Today, finally said we didn't argue with him. And now, even whenever y'all see him, whenever they come in, they say, we just can't believe Vincent is, wow. Wow. Vincent is say, wow. But, 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 but my parents never... They never stopped even reminding me of what they taught me. See, some of us just dumb down. I don't want to say nothing because I said it before. Sometimes you just need to remind me. Just, just, you know what? The Lord loves you. He's calling you back. Just life is hard. Life is life in. Life is life in. That's why you need the Lord. You, it's okay to remind them of that. So I would love to come with me to the conference this week. Love you. I just want to share. Text them a scripture every once in a while. Put a family group chat and encourage them in the Lord. And they'll say they don't want to hear it, but you can't unring a bell. You can think they ain't listening, but you can't unring a bell. And then finally, leave the outcome to God. You live your life and trust that God will touch your children's life, even if you're raising a prodigal. I felt heavy in my heart to, to share this because there are many of us that are carrying prodigal children. And you're paralyzed in life. There are some people that are not at church today because they're parents and they don't want to be reminded that it's Mother's Day because their children don't do. But first of all, God will give you other children. He'll give you people to appreciate your wisdom. And your, your children come around and be like, what they doing loving on you like that? Well, what you worried about it for? Leave the outcome to God. Psalms 138.8. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. God gave me these children. He's going to bless me. That's the beauty of motherhood. God bless you. I'm going to check in for questions. If I have any questions, you sent them. I'll answer them quickly. Uh, woo. Man, I should have stopped sooner. Y'all said a lot of questions today. I'm just going to start from the top. What if you, wait a minute. And if I already answered, I'm going to go. What if your mom abused and lied to you? Do you still take care of her when she's not able to take care of herself? Yeah, that's a great question. Let me just tell you what. First of all, I would say this. Uh, forgive her. Because if you don't, you're going to become her. How many people said I'd never be like my parents and they exactly like them? That's why abused people become abusers. That's why children of alcoholics and drug addicts become alcoholics and drug addicts. Because they become what they hated. And it's a spirit. Forgive her. And um, if she's an abuser, is she born again? Is she filled with the Holy Spirit? Um, only then will I allow my children to be around her. And that will be supervised. But God will show you what to do when that time comes. The Lord will show you. But you get free and you stay free. And whatever you can, if, if, if the best you can do is to say, she may never say sorry. <laughs> I hate it. I, I mean, I love you, man. Got the bishop bringing me glasses. She may never say sorry. She may never say it's right. But you can let her know. I forgive you. I release you. Because she may have carry a whole lot of guilt and shame. 
and feel that way when she sees you because she knows what she did. She knows. And so you release her, not for her, for you. And then when the time comes, and you don't have to talk to her every day and chat her up all day every day. But when the time comes, God will show you how to, what to do with your, with your mother and how to minister to her. Bishop, my mama makes me want to throw her from the train sometime. What do I do and what should she do to restore peace? Well, thank God we're not near the tracks. <laughs> Mama going to make it see another day. Uh, by the way, I have no idea who sent these questions, so I appreciate it. I assume that you're an adult because you're in this room and all the children are upstairs. Sometimes we go overboard in our relationships with our parents. They're, they're, first of all, if you're a wife, I'm, I'm about to get to your question. You're a wife, how are you on the phone for hours a day and your husband's sitting there looking at you? He's been at work, you've been at work, you've been talking to your mama all day. That's sick. That's messed up. Your husband's going to leave you. A good man will leave you for that. I'll leave you. I'll be like, what? I've been at work all day now. You said, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking to my mama. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, is she your husband? <laughs> Now, let's get back to the real question. As an adult, I mentioned that because as an adult, sometimes we get unhealthy relationships with our parents. And sometimes our parents have unhealthy I don't know why they do, but you got to, I don't want to use that psychological term, barrier, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, um, yeah, boundaries. I hate that word. Um, but, but I like it, but I hate it because it's used in the wrong way sometimes. But you got to, you got to, if your mother make you that upset and that mad and you grown, you don't have to talk to her every day and be around her all the time. So first of all, ask God to give you peace. Ask God to show you how to relate with your mother. Ask you what to do. And then there's some things you just don't need to bring up. You keep the conversation at a level two conversation. You bringing up all kinds of stuff. First of all, uh, you don't need to bring up certain things. You know y'all about to clash. You should be cordial, kind, honor her, move on. That makes sense? Mama don't need to, my mama ain't in none of my business. I just need you to know because I'm a man. My mama ain't in none of my business. I'm talking about none of it. My mama ain't none of my business. And she got that clear once I got married. Been sounding like you're not, you not you don't sound like you're doing good. What's going on? What's, what's going on with y'all? Nothing, mama, is our business. We're gonna handle it. Because when I'm gonna talk to you about what's going on in my house, then me and my wife get it right. Then when you see my wife later, you still holding a grudge about something I forgot. So my mama ain't in none of my business. My mama don't know none of my, she don't know what bills do, what bills not do. Because my mama don't need to know that. Because I'm grown. Oh, I'm telling y'all asked the question. Now, if I could put my mama in my business, then now, now she on my nerves because she all up in my business. Now, I'm grown. And that's not rebellious because mama can't raise you no more. That's not rebellion, especially a man. Let me ask your man, your mama stuff, you got a whole wife. You're going to sit on your mama's house eating and you come home and can't eat your wife food. She going to leave you. I would leave you. <laughs> I done cooking you. I'm full. I ate at mama's. Well, you going over there and lay up with your mama then. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Yeah, that was, a little, that was a little rough, but you get it. You eat, you eat her SpaghettiOs until she figure out how to make macaroni and cheese. <laughs> now, don't be feeding me out of can all the time. I don't want to be radioactive. I don't want no food out in no microwave. Don't cook for me in no microwave. Anyway, <laughs> a mother is a phenomenal woman. Man, this is a long one. Let me read it fast. A mother is a phenomenal woman, strong, nurturing, and will go above and beyond her children, for her children. Protects. She doesn't play about her children. Now, my question is, I was about to ask that, is are all women mothers, even if they fail to do what they are supposed to do as mothers. Example, on drugs industry spends no quality time with their children, dump her children on her mother. She's still considered a woman or a mother. Yeah, that's a good question. Just like a father. Um, unfortunately, we live in a time where Satan has 
change the biblical narrative that it is not a preferable thing for women to be mothers. Even other women look down on women who are real mothers. I know it's the fact because I don't watch it. I had to protect my wife from it. All you do, you don't work. All you do is be at home. I mean, excuse me, she works, she works full time, double time. Oh, she works. All you do is stay at home. Oh, oh, you down there building their legacy. She down here building our legacy. So that's the first thing. So the demonic, Luciferian way of the world has pulled mothers away from being what God wants them to be. Because the, in the last days, they will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. So now we got this whole, I need my time. How you, what you mean my time? Your child is, is two. No, that's your child. Most formative years, here's your my time. Here go your vacation. Your child is two. Here go your vacation. I'm about to help you with your vacation. Put that child on the sleeping schedule. Cut the lights out, lay them down. When the baby go to sleep, party is on. (laughs) Baby, y'all, time for y'all. First of all, you can't stay up with me. Put them on a bad time. Good night. It's only 8.30. If you can tell time, that's right, it's 8.30. Good night. And see, here's the thing. Bad time don't work if you let them sleep late. You got to wake them up in the morning. So they need sleep. This, y'all need to pay me for this. This is getting good. <laughs> y'all need to pay me for this. This is good advice. Put it on the bed. And you watch a movie, make a smoothie, love each other, have a good time. Arr. Enjoy one another. And in the morning it's on. Problem is, we want to be our kids' friends. We want to watch movies with them, do everything else. Hey, 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 where, where the popcorn at? I want kettle corn. Man, you going to bed. <laughs> I don't care what you want. <laughs> and once they get in that routine, they'll go to sleep. Now, if you want to go off to Bahamas, take them with you. Because they're your babies. And you got the grace to take care of them. Man, y'all... I got to hurry up. So everybody ain't a mama. Biologically, anybody can have a baby, but everybody is not a mama. This is what this person is asking. They're right, because a mama sacrifice. Let me tell you something. A mama don't compete with her daughter. Who are you the cute? What about me? What about me? What about me? Gravity going to take care of you no matter what you do. You can't compete with no young girl. Just like I can't compete with these young men. They think I can beat them. The truth is, they would whoop me if they wanted to. But they think I can beat them because I got my bluff in. They think I can beat them. Ain't damn one of them boys I can beat. Yeah, they got my strength. If they wanted to, they'll whoop me. It's like planting that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I know I'm not, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm deteriorating. My time is going. I don't compete with I don't compete with them. They're my upgrades. Last question that I see. I hope I answered your question. Oh, it's two. How do we deal with absent fathers with daughters that ask to call their father? What are tips for, for the mom and dad when the daddy not there? Let them call their daddy. Uh, yep. Uh, worst thing you can do is talk bad about your other parent. Because they're going to figure it out themselves. Now, for a while, you'll be the bad guy. But don't talk bad about that parent because, first of all, it reflects on you because you picked them. So if you talk bad about them, you picked them. So this is who I picked for you. This is who it is. You didn't mean to, whatever. But every child has an innate sense, a need to be connected to their parents. Who told you? Kid asked, I want, where my daddy? Who told you to say that? It's in them. You can hide them in a, in a shack in a barn somewhere and never meet a human. They're going to ask, who my daddy? Who my mama? And so you just, you got to let them talk to them if you, if you know where they at. 
and, and, and then you will know what levels of visitation, whatever. He ain't gave no money. He ain't did nothing. We over here struggling. I get it. That's, best, that's messed up. That's bad. But you can't deprive your child from talking to their father because he ain't gave no money because it's going to hurt her even further. It's an unfortunate thing. And the vice versa goes with mothers and fathers. As a matter of fact, men, the best gift, the best Mother's Day gift you can give to your why or to your children is how you treat their mama. I want my boys to see, my girls, my boys, to see how I treat their mama. It's a gift to them how I treat their mama. I don't say nothing bad about their mama to them. I don't even, no, I didn't say we don't argue, but we don't argue. I'm hot, but I think we within earshot. Now, my new place is the car. We want to argue. We go sit in the car in the driveway. Because <laughs> I got one. It's, I got one boy, man. That boy hear everything, no matter how. <laughs> that boy hear everything. I meet you in the car. Go sit in the car. Now, this is what I'm Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fix it. Let's go back in the house. <laughs> hey, y'all, y'all good? Uh, let's see. Because don't, they don't need to be seeing us tearing each other down. They don't need to see us. Now, to see the occasional disagreement, that's okay. They, they hear the disagreements. Sharon, tell me I'm driving too fast. Now they even know she's unre unreasonable. Even my boys know mama tripping. Yeah, exactly. I've been showing you. I tell y'all this for years. You driving too fast. They be like, she, she tripping. Yep. I thank y'all. I'm glad y'all say. Uh, the, the, you know, the disagreement in directions, disagreement in things of that sort, life stuff. But when, if we're heated and I'm really mad, I don't need to be arguing with my wife in front of their mama. Because I may say something that may not even hurt her, but it'll hurt them for the rest of their life. You didn't even think nothing about it. It damaged them for the rest of their life. I think I'm on what you were just asking me. Job gave sacrifices for his, <laughs> for his kids. This is a form of repentance. Can we as parents make repentance prayers for our children? Also in James, it talks about the elders praying for the sick. And then in terms, it says, in turn, it says uh, that there is, that there be any sin um, of God. God will forgive them. Can you please explain? All right, Job made sacrifices. Uh, sure, Job loved God. He went with the knowledge that he knew then. We can pray for our children. Matthew, I mean, Ezekiel 16 says, The soul that sinneth it shall die. The child will not be guilty of the sins of the father. The father will not be guilty of the sins of the uh, parent. Um, we cannot, we can pray and ask God to give him grace, ask God to give him space, but we cannot pray forgiveness from sin for our children. That's as the choice for them. And, uh, when, and, and what you're referring to in James, uh, any sick, let the elders lay hands upon you, be healed. That is, that is coming together. As we come together, we can help strengthen and heal one another and lead us to repentance. That's another thing for prodigal parents, parents of prodigals, that if you're a child, you need a support group. That's why it's so important for us to not forsake the assembly, coming together and being real. I've had problems with some of my children in real time in front of you. I didn't hide them, push them away. I said, can you pray for my son? Pray for my daughter in real time in this church. Didn't hide and ship them off somewhere or push them away. I've had issues in real time, but then there are people, there are some people who just want you to fail, and that's just in life anyway. But there are people in this body that help encourage us and help encourage your child, help strengthen, and now they're doing well. And some of my children who I had some challenges with now can say, I still talk to sister so-and-so, even though you don't see them, but they're in church somewhere. Because you can't do this by yourself. You need a body to strengthen and help you out. You can't, and as much as you pray to God, I wish, I wish I could pray for the forgiveness of all your sins and pray that you all be sanctified. I wish I could do that, but I can't. You got a choice. All right, that was all your questions. Hello, everybody. I am so excited. I thank God for the Tabernacle Church. 
Tabernacle Church of God in Christ here in South Haven is one of God's miracles. This is a huge miracle. It was December 2019 that God said start a church. We didn't know where, we didn't know how, and for sure we didn't know that COVID was coming. God gave us the planet church. We had obstacles looking around the entire metro area, but God led us here to South Haven. It was a God thing. But then COVID hit. We didn't know what to do, didn't know how to do it, but God showed himself. We began this church really as an outreach, giving out 6,000 boxes of food a week. We went beyond that, 6,000 boxes of food a week, to then being able to start services. June 2020, in the midst of the pandemic, we began services Sunday nights. Then October 2020, we began services in this building. We took full possession, full schedule, serving, and now God is accelerating doing the work. We are a part of a great miracle. There are great people of God. It's beyond my comprehension what God is doing. But now, if it, what God has done in the past few years, he wants to take us to the next level. I believe in this season, there's divine acceleration. And as God is accelerating the church, he's accelerating the lives of God's people so that we can be a blessing. We want to pay this place off. We owe it's $10 million worth of property, 17 acres, 100,000 square feet, 850 parking spaces. But God wants to do even more, not just to have church for church sake, but to be open every day, a beacon to the community. Community, a light. We once we pay this place off, we're gonna launch our Christian school K through 12. Take our children out of the mouth of the dragon and educate and raise up soldiers. We're gonna also build on this side of the church building a senior apartment facility. Yes, at least 200 units where our seniors will be able to stay and we'll be able to minister and share. And at the lower level, will be a place for businesses. And one of the things will be a restaurant, a healthy restaurant to feed our people so that we can be healthy. In addition to that, God is going to free us up to utilize his resources to have a pregnancy center on this side. Yes, prenatal care to make sure our mothers are well taken care of, to prevent abortions. Those who feel like there's no other hope but abortion will have prenatal care, uh, postnatal care to prevent from infant mortality and uh, care for childbirth, to prevent from the crisis of morbidity during childbirth. In addition to that, the gym on the other side, we're going to have it as a wellness a health and wellness center where there'll be uh you won't have to go to lifetime fitness but that we can focus on the health of people things in addition to that our bible training center where people will be able to earn degrees from associates all the way through to doctors all of this is already in motion in addition to that our youth center youth activity center which will be above the gym our senior activity center which will be it's actually started now which is starting here in the church and finally our record label there are so many things that are happening it's so great that what God is doing and the beautiful thing is once we leverage that and leverage the land that God has given us all of these things are already set in motion through partnerships we won't have to raise any more money we won't have to do anything God is going to do a miracle in this place in our homes in our lives and I'm excited to be a part of the miracle.